Algebra 1, number 3.1a, we're talking about addition property of equality in this unit, and we're going to talk about using the addition property of equality. So remember, an equation is a statement that two algebraic expressions are equal. That's why they have an equal sign. Like a balanced scale, both sides should equal each other. 2 plus 3 on the left is equal to 4 plus 1 on the right. Replacements that make an equation true are called solutions. And to solve an equation, we need to find all the solutions. Remember in 7th and 8th grade math, we learned about zero pairs. If we have a positive 5 and we take away 5, it's going to give us 0. If we have a positive 1 and we add a negative 1, that's going to be a 0. Or even with decimals, 0.25, take away 0.25 is a 0. We also covered this in video 2.3c in this Algebra 1 playlist. So if you're getting lost, just remember to check this video's description for links to similar and helpful videos, okay? All of those will be in there. So here's the formal addition property of equality. For all rational numbers, a, b, and c, if a equals b, then a plus c is going to equal b plus c. Because a and b are equal to each other, they can both be added to c and be the same thing, see? So, we can add the same number to both sides of an equation and get an equivalent equation. This is called the addition property of equality. We can solve an equation like x plus 5 equals negative 3 by getting the variable x alone on one side of the equal sign. We want to get it by itself. And we need to get rid of that plus 5 on the left side to get the x alone, don't we? Well, since minus 5 is the additive inverse, the opposite of a plus 5, plus 5 plus a minus 5 is going to get us 0. We can subtract that positive 5 from each side of the equal sign to get x alone, and it'll make a 0 pair. So take a look at this. We've got x plus 5 equals negative 3. If we take 5 away from both sides right here, this is going to create our 0 pair. See? Plus 5 minus 5. What's going to happen is we're going to get x by itself, on the left side of the equation. This is using, using the addition property and the inverse property. See? Because negative 5 is the inverse of positive 5. That's going to get us a 0. And this is going to equal a negative 8. Because remember, when you're adding like signs, you use the sign like the add-ins, like signs like add-ins. So it's going to be a negative 8. All right? So because of the additive identity property, it's going to keep its identity when it's added to 0, isn't it? So it's going to stay x, and x is going to be equal to negative 8. See? It's equal to negative 8 in this particular equation. Now we can check it. We take our equation, x plus 5 equals negative 3, and we plug in, we substitute the negative 8 for the x, and we see that it equals negative 3 on both sides, so we did it right. Okay? Let's try this again. Now we've got negative 8 equals a minus 10. Well, we can use the addition property again. We need to get a alone on the right side of the equal sign now. It's on the right side. And if we add 10, we'll get rid of the negative 10, and we'll make that 0 pair again. We'll use the additive inverse property. A negative 10 and a positive 10 is going to make a 0, right? That makes a 0 pair. And... The additive identity property says a plus 0 stays as a, so we've got 2 equals a. And we check it. We write our equation, negative 8 equals a minus 10. We plug, substitute the 2 in for the a, and we see that it's negative 8 on both sides, so we know we did it correctly. Let's do it again with decimals. We've got x take away minus 5.3 is going to equal 2.1. We make a 0 pair with the negative 5.3 to isolate this x on the left side. So the additive inverse property says we can add, point, point, uh, we can add a positive 5.3 to both sides of the equal sign. That's going to create our zero pair right here. See? And 2.1 plus 5.3 is 7.4. So x is equal to 7.4. The additive identity property says if we add a 0 to this x, it's going to stay in x, so x is equal to 7.4. See? See how we do that? And we don't even really need to add this 0. We can just say x equals 7.4 when we start 
going a little faster in this. So we check this by writing our equation and we plug in the 7.4 where x is and 7.4 minus 5.3 is 2.1 on both sides so we know we did it correctly. So let's see how we can do this quicker. We've got p minus 2 eighths equals 3 eighths. So because this is a minus 2 eighths we're going to add 2 eighths to both sides. We're going to create a zero pair here and it's gone. We get rid of it and all that's left is p equals 5 eighths. And to check it we plug 5 eighths in for p in the equation and we see it equals 3 eighths on both sides and we know we did it correctly. So one last time really quick. We've got a negative 7 plus a equals 12. We need to get this a by itself on this left hand side of the equal sign. And if we have a negative 7 we can add a positive 7 to each side of the equal sign. We have to keep it balanced. And this side creates a zero pair and gets rid of that negative 7, right? That's the additive inverse property and we end up with a equals 19. And we plug in the 19 for the a in the equation. Negative 7 plus 19 equals 12. Negative 7 plus 19 is 12 on both sides. See? So we know we did it correctly. All right? So I hope this made sense and I'm going to have lots of links in the description even from 8th grade math to help you out here. And uh, we're going to move on to 3.1b and we're going to talk about solving problems. We're going to make some equations for some word problems and solve them using the additive property of equality and additive inverses. Okay? I'll see you there. Bye.